Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. And today I'm gonna be trying two new things. Number one, um, I'm gonna start recording myself so you guys can see me personally, and that way we can uh, start interacting a little bit more. And two, let's celebrate the new branding for RMA Fire and RMA Design. Um, let me know your thoughts. The tiger is looking fucking hardcore. All right. Without further ado, today we're gonna be talking about how to create. Um, sand particles inside of Houdini and how to make them interact with whatever object you want and have them come out in a very 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 cool way this kind of effect uh, I've used several times the most no noticeable effect can be in IFCC um, main titles and also um, some R&D done and you can see it in my reel as well where this really cool mask is sort of coming out of the sand um, so let's dive into Houdini and I'll walk you guys through the setup for this specific shot um, and this is also addressing one of our fans comments where you guys are interested in checking out um, already built shots you already know the result you're gonna get from this tutorial let's dive in Alrighty guys, so here in Houdini, we've got the following things. We have the RS dome, and we have two spotlights, I mean two RS lights, which we can see right here. Just open up a new, new scene view. Alrighty. So, two lights, an RS dome, and our camera. And then we've got the sculpture which is whatever object you want to bring in my collision which basically I'll show you guys it's a process that I go through for prepping whatever we're gonna collide with and our source then we bring everything into the simulation and then we use dops to bring it out of the simulation and render here so the sculpture it's just a file import of a scanned piece of mine uh, this is a uh, a mask that I got on a trip on some Indian tribes so this is basically just a scan that I did and you can see it's super high resolution so um, I pass it through this VDV source just so that this VDV create VDV to polygons and then convert it back into polygons. This is a great technique for reducing the amount of geometry of things that you're gonna run through simulations. I specifically like it for um, for sand because now I can set up my simulation and tell it, okay, this is gonna be my collision geometry and my my animation it's here on my transform and the reason why I do that it's just because you know it would take forever to seem something as detailed as the real thing um, and then I have this which the reason why it's referenced from transform 7 it's because this is the one the transform 7 is the same animation but at the full resolution piece so this is what I render so two things this is the one that I apply the material to and the flag that I turn on when I'm ready to render after the simulation is done and this is the one that goes through the simulation the collision geometry okay so my floor right here I'll show you guys it's a simple grid so I wanted this to be just a specific floor that I wanted to build so I made it circular, I extruded this so it gives me this extrusion then I used that technique to turn it VDVs and then smooth it out and then convert that so it kind of smoothens out, melts my geometry I like that and then I did a UV project if I hit enter I will see what it's projecting um, and it's projecting the UVs. So if we do a UV quick shade, we'll see the UVs 
on my grid on my piece so if this the UVs are controlled based on the positioning of this and I can control the size because I'm basically just projecting the UVs I know I'm only going to be seeing the things from the top so we can use whatever image we want for this UVs right I think I actually have an image right here um, so if I copy that and if I place it here then we'll be able to see that I can basically move this image around, scale it and set it up for whatever whatever scale and piece we want for my texture um, and I used attribute from map because right here um, it's a it's in my vertex attributes as a UV and I wanted this color to be there as my color as a point attribute and I wanted it to be a point attribute because I was use I was gonna use this to displace my geometry um, but more on that later that is probably a topic for a different tutorial and if you guys want to see how to transfer the color information and displace the geom into points and displace the geometry based on that using VOPS, great technique. Leave a comment and I'll sh do a tutorial on that as well. Which is essentially what's happening here. See, my geometry is being displaced based on the image that I'm using. All right, then I smooth it out. Then I has it through VDBs and then I convert it back into polygons and then what I've got here is my center collision geometry it's my floor right but it still has some of the carves that the image I'm gonna use for the texture has so the reason why I did that is that I'm doing I'm rendering my geometry like this flat as a texture but I'm using displacement and bump and a couple of fancy things in my material so that we get the image displacing the geometry but if I sim it with a flat surface then my particles are gonna fall and they're gonna feel like they're transpassing my displacement so I created I used my color to displace the geometry and therefore the sand that hits it it's gonna be more accurate if I increase the resolution of this and um, and then if we match that to the displacement then it's gonna feel like uh, like the real thing okay and then this right here is my source my particle source so the way I did my particle source is here on my boolean take a step back so so I so I'm not rushing through things my grid right and then my boolean I'm using this tube to subtract right so right here that tube is being it comes in and it subtracts that piece and that's what allows this floor to have that hole now if we isolate that piece that it's creating the the carve pass it through VDBs then use a little bit use a magnet to kind of pull it up a little bit see kind of pull it up so it feels like this is a pile of sand and then I'm creating a grain source then on my grain source here is where I set up my particle um, resolution which is also affecting inside of my sculpture sim it updates the particle separation so the more that I have here it's gonna update inside of my dub net the amount of particles that are close to each other so the less that I go here the more particles that I will have and the slower my simulation will be and the cooler it's gonna look so let's see what it looks like with 200 grain source there we go and one thing that I I want you guys to make sure you do is make sure you update you push the jitter scale up because if you leave it down then it's gonna feel uniform and it looks really weird when you sim something like that I've gone through that before and it looks like 
you're going through a simulation of very organized placed sand. So you want to make sure you jitter. The points, so basically what it does is that it moves the points around. Makes it feel much more natural. Okay, I'm just going to hit escape, cancel that, and just set this to a 3. Just so that we're working with reasonable amount of points when we're testing things out. Then you want to put a rest attribute and the out center source. Okay, and then we've got everything we need. We've got everything we need into to jump into our sculpture. So let's jump into our sculpture sim to our dops. Okay, inside of dops we have the pop source. And our pop source is pointing into the center source, right? Remember that's what we just talked about, the center source. That's what we were looking at a second ago. Then the grain update, just so, just so that Houdini knows that we're working with grains. And grains have their specific sort of, uh, you know, mathematic uh, calculations. Then we're using this to visualize it as a sprite fog. Then I'm adding the pop color, which I am ramping based on the randomized based on the ID. We have the particle separation, which it's a 0.3 because we changed it before. If we go here lower, then we're going to have the amount of particles that we actually need to create this kind of simulation. Right, and then we've got our pop object. And then our pop object, I've set the bounce to a 1, the friction to a 0.2, um, and that's about it. Okay, and then we've got two objects that are merged right here. And that's going to be, the first object is going to be our collision geometry. And I have enabled use deformation geometry, use transform, and create an active object. That's using the transform so that it's actually animated. So whatever animation we have on our object, we place here. Okay. And then this is our static solver, our static object, which does not have those enabled and is pointing towards our out center collider. Then we've got our gravity set to a negative 9.80655. And then we can check out what this is going to do. Okay, you can see that I can switch my color based on my grain using a ramp and randomizing per particle ID. Um, and then if I hit play, you're going to see that all of our particles are moving. And the simulation takes place. Now, don't worry about the fact that they look like huge balls, huge spheres. That's something that once you increase the amount of particles, you want to control that using the P scale after when we use the DOP import. And I'll show you guys that in a second. So you want to let this run, and you probably want to cache this. Actually, you probably you must cache this because this is going to be heavy. Once we get into a DOP import, here is where we have the DOP import. Whatever we just simped, right? And I am importing just basically my geometry. I don't want to import anything about my geometry. Okay, so we have import from DOPS. You want to point, point towards whatever DOP network that you have. So we have the object, the sculpture sim. Obviously, if you look here, sculpture sim, which, are, which is our DOP. And I'm pointing to the node that I'm importing, which is the pop object. And um, um, then using a cache to cache this to disk. Um, I have not cached this to disk, so we're going to avoid that. I'm just going to skip over it, and then I'm converting this to polygons. And I, I think I'm converting it to polygons. I, I, I don't think we even need to convert it to polygons. Um, the reason th this was just for me, for the sake of testing. But you don't need to convert it to polygons. If we hit D here. On our viewport, 
in the geometry I'm going to increase the point size so we've got that let me see why I was using this I just can't recall a reason yeah okay attribute randomize this I'm using to randomize our p-scale so I am reducing our global scale to a 0 0.01 and then applying a sand particle uh, material now here is where you can you know you can randomize your scale of the particles or whatever you want and use the minimum and maximum value here just so that you have a nice variation and if we come out I am using redshift so on my dot import if we enable it you can see that I have redshift render part render object as particles and then I've got my sand particles material here which I'll show you guys what it is it is pretty simple all I am using for my sand particle material is RS user data um, and what this is doing is RS user data color is importing my CD okay and um, why am I using that I mean I can use a ramp there's many many other options of doing this but I wanted them to be this color because I kind of I don't know I, I did it inside of inside of inside here with this um, ramp based on our particle ID but this is something that you can change after the simulation has taken place and but since I tested it and I like the way it looked inside I don't want to change my particle color I want to leave it as is so I'm using the RS user data to point towards my CD so it doesn't change the particle color and then I reduce the reflection and increase the roughness a little bit and that's it a very simple very simple method here the global scale multiplier you can tweak that if you don't want to change your global scale multiplier inside of your attribute angle inside of your attribute randomize global scale but I use this to calculate the sizing of my particles and that's it guys um, please leave a comment if you have any questions um, and we and I look forward to sharing more awesome tutorials